Your neck. Oh, uh, what about it? You have one! <laughs> Welcome back to Crystal Clear! I'm Ostrich Fox, and the Steve Universe movie has blessed us with its official poster. Last week, you guys may recall in my Comic Con Expectations video that we would either get a poster reveal at the panel itself or next week. Guys, it's next week, the poster is here, and we have the confirmation of a few things, including a time skip. Yes, this is the new look of Steven Universe and the villain reveal. But who is she? Now, briefly, we're going to touch on this poster, break down everything that goes into it, and get you guys excited for next week when the trailer is revealed at San Diego Comic-Con. With all that said, let's dive in. Yes, yeah, so welcome to the post-change-your-mind world. We, uh, speculated a few times that the movie and general future of the series could be geared more towards a time skip. We've had a few curveballs along the way, but this was always the most logical next step. Steven has found himself. He knows who he is. He knows what he and the Crystal Gems are fighting for. He's made peace with the diamonds. He's beyond matured. So naturally, it's time for a change. As you guys may remember, Steven's physical growth is tied to his emotional growth. If he feels older, he'll look older. But it has to be natural, not forced. Now that he's met his natural growth, Steven looks a lot closer to how he appeared in Steven's birthday. Although, obviously, they couldn't just stick with that design. It'd be kind of lazy. Although, that shirt kind of gave him is very nice. So to coincide with that growth, Steven's design has got a bit of an overhaul. Rocking a pink varsity jacket. Well, a Letterman jacket, but calling it varsity ties into his growth. If you've been involved with a sports team or band in school, then around your senior year, you've probably been granted a varsity jacket. I remember my senior year. Everyone had one and just, it just, just, just made me a little bit envious. But being granted a varsity jacket is usually a sign of growth. How much you evolved in your journey. It can mark an end and a new beginning. Which is exactly what it means for Steven. Plus, it just looks cool. Alongside that, his little pinkish red shirt is now just a blue shirt. Not only so it won't contrast with the pink, but it ties into Steven owning his own identity. Although the red shirts he was wearing were hand-me-downs from Greg. Steven's entire closet were all things from his father. From a somewhat failed music career. I say somewhat because, I mean, look at how rich Greg is now. Steven's identity shouldn't be tethered to either Pink Diamond or Greg. So by changing the color but keeping the star, it makes it unique to only Steven. So yes, when it comes to branding in season 6 and all that, this is how you meet that halfway. It's still Steven, he's still a recognizable character, but now he's a bit taller and has a bit more swagger. Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl still have the reformations from Change Your Mind because why would you get rid of that so quickly? And you can see that Garnet also has her wedding ring, so they weren't lost on Homeworld. And if they were, well, they could have easily gotten replaced, but let's just assume those are the same rings. Before we touch on the villain, let's actually talk about some new amazing things. The Crystal Temple and what we're gonna call a... Uh, the new barn. The temple has been rebuilt, and you may notice a new dome. If I had to take a wild guess, I would assume this makes room for Bismuth and possibly Paradigm Lapis. Bismuth still has her forge, but she can't just live there. They're not gonna avoid putting her in episodes that easily. So this has become her new living quarters. But it also appears a new floor was added to the house entirely, which could be for the uncorrupted gems or just Paradigm Lapis. Barn 2.0. While Paradon Lapis could be living here and not the barn, which I hope isn't the case, I believe this new structure, which yeah, is obviously reminiscent of the barn, is for all of the uncorrupted gems. Even with the new additions to Steven's house, every single gem that was in the burning room cannot fit there, but they can all be in one big home. Now the blatant similarities of the barn will bring your mind to Paradon Lapis, and again, while I hope they actually are living at the temple, as they are full-fledged crystal gems, not to say the uncorrupted gems aren't, perhaps Paradigm Lapis are helping the uncorrupted gems adjust to Earth, helping them create meat borps, showing them camp pining hearts and all sorts of television. Like, they run the place, they just don't sleep there. Also, going back to the temple right quick, there seems to be two flags, but I can't make out what they are. Perhaps they're just flags saying, hey, we are the crystal gems, but we're also earthlings. We may not be organic beings, we're not humans, but we still belong to the Earth. Not homeworld, not anywhere else. Or perhaps the flags could end up symbolizing the alliance between the crystal gems and homeworld. 
the Diamond Authority is no longer on bad turns with our heroes. Thus, they're able to celebrate their union. Also, going back to Meat Morbs, it appears what I'm assuming to be Peridot and Lapis has taken some of the dismantled pieces of the temple and erected a little Meat Morb statue out of it, putting a treat on top. Uh, I mean, do what you gotta do. And now, let's move on to the villain. We still don't know what her gemstone is, which is completely intentional, but now we have a clearer look at her face and design. Now, everyone on the internet has already been comparing her to either Dee Dee from Dexter's Lab or XJ9 from Teenage Robot, to which, valid. But when you look at this gem, you automatically notice something's off. Look at her eyes. We've never seen eyes like those before. Her face also has lines that honestly remind me of Thanos. That again, gives you the idea that something's not right. And her gemstone, as we all expected it to be, is shaped like a heart, but upside down. Now, I know a lot of people have suggested that the villain could be Morganite, but guys, I think signs are pointing to this villain being an off-color red diamond, or perhaps an attempt at a pink diamond. For starters, being a Morganite kind of takes away from the uniqueness of the movie and who this villain is. I say this because for the villain to just be one Morganite implies that, just like any gem, there are hundreds of other Morganites on Homeworld. After all, when Rhoda Knight referred to her owner, she said when our Morganite found out, not just when Morganite found out. It was that Morganite unique to the ruby and pearl that make up Rhoda Knight. So the villain has to be a one-off gem. What's a better one-off than a failed diamond? Someone yellow, blue, and white tried to create and either they forgot about or locked away. Reawakening now, when Homeworld is in an era of peace. Also, not to mention, guys, just look at her. She has yellow diamond shoulder pads and gloves. She looks like a diamond. That's why they're comfortable with giving away the design, because her eyes aren't diamond shaped. But again, it communicates to me, she came out wrong. And when they really get into the details of the movie next week, they're gonna be like, oh, by the way, her name's Red Diamond. Oh my God, another diamond. But her eyes, oh, she's off color. Oh, oh. And that's all I really have for you guys today. How do you feel about there being a confirmed time skip, a new temple, a new barn? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RoundtableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Ostrich Fox. We're also on Instagram. Help the Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or support us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please order like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Ostrich Vox, signing out.